everyone, my name is Alice and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little different, it's quite highly requested and it's going to be more of a how-to video. And I'm going to be showing you how I recolour my royal portraits in-game so that they can show up in my palaces of my sims. So in order for this to work, you're going to need the Sims 4 Studio. You're also going to need some sort of royal painting. Uh, custom content. So for this video I'm using, I think it's Allegory of Spring I use by the Jim 07. In general I'd recommend the Jim 07 for this, but what you're going to be looking for when you're looking for a custom content painting is more the frame than the actual painting because that's what you're going to be replacing with your sim, so make sure you like the frame. You're also going to need some sort of editing software, so I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Photoshop and Lightroom. But I know that the tools in Photoshop is very similar to that of GIMP, which is a free software. And there is also Canva as well, which is quite similar. So, and I used to do this on Canva, so don't feel like you can't do this. I just use Photoshop and Lightroom nowadays. So you don't feel like you can't do this just because you don't have Photoshop or Lightroom. So we're going to start this video by me showing you how I actually take the photos of my Sims in game. So for this to work you're going to need Andrew's Pose Player and the Teleport Any Sim mod. And you're also going to need some sort of Royal Pose Pack but there are plenty of them so just look on Pinterest and I'm sure you'll find one you like. So what I'm doing now and what I've been doing since the start of the video is I've been setting up for the royal portrait so if you see that knight there that comes with the teleport any sim mod and through that you're able to teleport your sim into the right position you want so i would definitely recommend getting this mod because it helps a lot when taking photos especially using andrew's pose player the lights i'm putting in these come with get famous i think I don't know if Moschino stuff also has stuff good for this, but I don't have that pack, so I use Get Famous for this, just as some good extra light. I do actually end up deciding that this is too bright. Um, on, So I'm actually taking flashback wedding portraits of my current queen and prince consort, um, but with how bright the light was with my reshade on top, it was just a bit much on her wedding dress and I wanted to be able to see the pattern. So you'll see I end up going for like a darker sort of light instead. And then I just end up brightening up their faces in Lightroom later on. So the pose pack I just used was by the Royal Sims. Um, I didn't actually end up going with this angle again, I end up moving my Sims. Um, and as you can see, I'm sort of playing a little bit with the lights because I'm not quite sure of what I want. I would recommend changing the colour of the lights um, from like sort of the warmish yellow to more of the cool tones. I personally prefer when it's like more cooler than yellow. I don't, I hate ye yellow light on my sims, I despise it. So I always try to cool it down and then I normally cool it down a bit more in editing. I kind of normally pick a few different poses and I cycle through them. I normally take a few different options before I settle on the one I want because I never quite know what ones I'm going to go for or what ones I'm going to use. So this was just sort of me kind of cycling through trying every single pose. Um, I don't actually end up going with any of these because again I move my sims later on into a darker spot and choose some different poses. But this is just a way of me sharing my process with you guys. So what I'm doing now is I'm using tool mod to move my sims around freely. So to, in order to do this, you shift click and press tool mod and then you do toggle active object. If you press alt whilst clicking your sim, you'll be able to select two sims and then you just sort of just left click on where you want them to be. It was kind of a game changer for me when I started doing it and like found out how to do it for like taking photos because it just makes it so much easier and it means you don't have to unpose your sims to move them because if you were to like go back into build mode and get like another teleporter your sims will unpose and you don't always want that. So I end up moving them into a darker spot. Just a uh, thing with reshade. So I actually use a sort of an edited version by me of Mira Ray's reshade preset. A lot of people have asked me what reshade I use, so I've sort of added and sort of edited some settings, I've got some new settings, but I use her preset as a base. So I know Ray has like a separate video on like how she d edits her photos and how she like on how to use reshade and her reshade preset so i'm gonna link that video in this just so that you guys can go download that if you want to again i do use an edited version of it by myself um and i also then heavily edit my photos in lightroom afterwards so um that's like what i use for reshade 
So in order to take photos, what you do is you enter the tab mode. So you click tab on your keyboard and then you sort of enter like this mode of The Sims 4 where you have none of the UI and you're sort of free to like zoom in and zoom out. So you can kind of, I use The Sims 3 camera mode. I would definitely recommend using The Sims 3 camera mode if you're able to, if you're taking photos, because it just allows much more flexibility with what you're doing. Uh, to enable reshade, I have like some some sort of command set so I press shift n uh, to open up the sort of reshade all of like the settings so I can edit them if I need to slightly and then to turn on reshade I click shift b so they're like the hotkeys I've set again in Mira Ray's video where she explains how to use her reshade and download her preset she explains how to use the hotkeys so I'm just going to direct you guys to that video so what you just saw was me setting camera angles, so if you press control then between 5 and 9 you can set one of those keys to be a certain camera angle and then if you press alt between 5 and 9 that gets rid of that angle and resets it, so that's really handy. Now what I'm doing is I'm using the tool mod to rotate my sim slightly, this is a very handy tool that you can use. Um, I, it kind of is self-explanatory, it says like you just kind of rotate between a certain number. Tool mod's actually quite easy because it kind of tells you what to do, so don't feel like too overwhelmed by it because tool mod is really helpful and handy and I would recommend it so much, so don't feel intimidated by it because it's very, very helpful. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting my photo into Photoshop. Um, so what I have is sort of like an Instagram post kind of ratio already. So what I'm doing now is I'm using one of my untitled designs which are actually sort of like light ray and dust presets I made, sort of like overlays I made in Canva. So I use their background remover tool to make these and I end up putting them on all my posts and they're really really handy. And now what I'm doing is I'm using the quick selection tool to select my sims and like their outline so that I can put them on top of the dust and the light rays. Sometimes I don't do this, it really depends like the type of sort of vibe I want to go for but as you can see like one of the dust particles is on Eleanor's face and I don't want that so I'm kind of using the um, quick selection tool to get rid of it. They call it quick, it's not that quick especially if you've got like a really big one to do. So the plus at the top of the screen that is to add more to it and then the minus is to get rid of it so that's what I'm doing now I'm sort of getting rid of like going closer to the outline of them so yeah it helps a lot it's a bit confusing what I'm doing but it's sort of you'll see in a moment and then what I do is I shift click when I'm done and then I do layer via copy and then I get a new layer of my sims um, from what I just did and then what I do is I place that on top of the untitled design. So I put that layer, the new layer, on above the untitled design. I move that. And then when I'm done, I'm done with my image. I click File and then I export it. For some reason, my screen did not record this. <laughs> but I export it and I choose the highest settings possible to do so. So I export it as a JPEG. And then what I do when I'm done is I open it in Lightroom and that's what we're going to move to now. Okay so I'm upping the sharpening of the image then I'm going into the mask section and I'm selecting the subject of the photo and that uses AI to detect my sims. So then I up the contrast, the highlights, the tint slightly to make it a bit more pink and then people always ask me why my sims look so defined and they got good shadows and that's because I always up the clarity quite a bit and that gives your sims really nice defined shadows. Then what I do is I duplicate and invert the mask. Unfortunately, none of my pop-ups sort of like recorded, unfortunately, I don't know why. Um, so that sort of detects everything behind them. So I'm now doing sort of the same process on the background. I normally up the clarity a bit more on the background rather than on my sims. So as you can see, I'm sort of playing a bit more with the temperature on this one. So I'm making it a bit cooler rather than, like I said earlier, I don't like yellow light on my sims. So if I need to make it cooler, I will. So now I'm making another mask. So I'm using it on the subject again and I'm picking their hair. So what I'm doing with William's hair is I always do this. I'm defining his hair a bit more because I like I don't know why, I like it when the hair's really shiny um, and I up the clarity again on his hair all the way and then I'm making his hair slightly more yellow just because of like the lights and everything, I think that looks quite cool. I'm doing the same thing for Eleanor, 
Um, I'm upping the clarity um, of her hair and everything. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using a brush to get rid of the tiara. So as you can see, the subject and the hair, it detected the tiara and I don't want that. So I'm using the brush tool to remove it with the eraser, as you can see. And now I'm just brightening up their faces. Um, as you can see, like you can see the detail on Eleanor's wedding dress. But if I had the harsh light on her in game, it, you wouldn't have been able to see the details on her wedding dress. So I'm just sort of doing the lighting on their face more manually. So then when you're all finished and happy with your image, you're going to export it to your documents or pictures folder. Because I use Lightroom, it exports to my Lightroom folder. Okay, so I'm now in Sims 4 Studio. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up my projects. And that's going to open up your mods folder. So you're going to sort of pick the painting that you chose. As you can kind of see, I've already got some recolors I've already made in like my listed projects. But I'm going to create a new one for you guys. So this is actually a painting I've wanted to recolor for a while because I love the frame. So I'm going to click my projects. Um, and then I'm going to select the allegory of autumn. As you can see here it is or it's spring it's spring or autumn i'm not too sure so what you're going to do is you're going to export the texture so you're going to click on the texture then export the texture then you save that in your documents as a png unfortunately none of my files recorded none of the pop-ups recorded so what i'm doing is i'm saving the image as a png in my documents or pictures folder on my computer now i've opened up that file in photoshop so as you can see this is what it looks like um, as the actual file that the sims processes so you've got sort of like a ton of black you've got like the corners of the frame and then you've and the back of the frame is at the top right and then you've got the image at the bottom in on the left hand side so i've just opened up the image i want to use as you can see i'm sort of figuring out how i want to resize it and then what i'm gonna do is I'm going to select the layer one. So now I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to use it to select the box where the original image from the original custom content painting is. I'm going to box in around it. And then when I'm done and I've selected the image, I'm going to shift click and press layer via cut. And this will get rid of that layer and make it just a transparent PNG file. Now what I can do as well, which I didn't do, which I probably should have done, is you can drag your image under layer one which means that like it's all perfectly where it should be. I probably should have done that, but it worked the way I wanted to. I would recommend dragging your image below layer one. Yeah, and then you're gonna want to export this as a PNG. You have to export it as a PNG. If you don't, it won't work in your game and it will look all glitched out. So I'm now back in Sims 4 Studio and I'm gonna add a swatch. And then I'm importing the image in. So again, my pop-up isn't showing, and here we are. That's how it looks, and then I'm gonna save the file. So because this image was already in my mods folder, it's saving it to my mods folder. So I'm now opening up my game again, and I'm gonna test it in game. So yeah, I mean, I find this really, really useful and handy. When I first started recoloring portraits, it was just a massive game changer for me. And it really helps personalize your royal families and like your palaces and everything. And it makes your world feel so much more real, which I just, I love it. I love world building and I just adore like making my Sims feel like they're actually part of the world and the Sims. Cause there's a tendency if you're like a royal storyteller on Instagram to feel like, oh, I just make content for Instagram. They're not really royalty in my game. But if you have all these portraits in your palaces with your game, and also if you have the royalty mod, the royalty mod helps a lot with this, but it makes it feel like your Sims are actually proper royalty in the Sims world, which is really fun. I'm putting move objects on so I can show you guys the image. And here we are. So that's my painting in game. I'm just gonna like show it to you guys. Obviously I use reshade like already and I like heavily edit my photos. So it might be worth if you do that and you're using reshade on reshade when like you're taking photos in game. It might be worth lowering the saturation a little bit. I probably need to do that myself, but it's fine for now. I hope this tutorial was interesting for you guys and informative. I hope, I'm sorry that none of my pop-ups showed, which is really annoying. Um, I'm hoping that didn't 
make it confusing at all but if you have any questions on this feel free to mention it in the comments or message me on instagram or anything my instagram is rose of simstanstasia okay guys thank you for watching i'll see you all again really really soon bye